с футболом. Without nature, we really can't exist. We all depend on nature. It plays such a major part in life that we mightn't even know about, you know. So, and that's the reason why I like it too, because it always keeps me occupied and wanted to know more about things. And that's how I really get along with conservation. For the Burima Mora Passage, not only directly uh, conservation in terms of species or plants, but it's more about the people and the way people um, go about their day-to-day -day life and how much they depend on the forest and how much the forest depends on them as well. There's been more boats coming in, like fuel boats from Venezuela, which is causing like fuel pollution as well. When they sell their fuel and the waste fuel that is left back, they normally dump it in the rivers. From the river, it entered the bank. It entered the bank. As the tide goes down, it settles on the bank. It could cause um, like mainly migration of crabs. So yeah, it causes an impact. That oil now chasing all the crab all over by the root. River corner side, crab is plenty. We just catch all by the land inside, we just catch crab. But now it's different. When the crab march them now, we not get no crab. You got to go a good way far in the back dam, we got to go search for march crab. The oil not reach till in the back dam. So the crab, they like a good way.
Since young days, I start catch craft for sale. Well, my mother and my father catch any crab and I just follow them to sell in the market. From that time now, we know that the crab is not really plenty no more. When the crab season comes, we don't see no crab. Well, I can dig more crab here. I dig couple, I dig couple hole and I get on. Then chop off the mangrove them, the crab is moving more far. So the people them now them chop down all the mangroves because they need farm. They want to plant. GMCS is known over the years for conservation and um, conservation it's not only about securing plants, animals, name it. It's about the people because the people depend on the forest. So you can do one and exclude the other. Some of the things with the work that GMC is doing that I am a part of, um, because I'm the boat captain and I go wherever the drone unit go, I see forest sand. and it looked like it got more clear in the back, what do you think they're doing in the back there? People doing some agriculture or something. Imagine how many mangroves used to be there. A lot of the people depend on the crabs and due to deforestation, there is like less crabs now because the crabs live within the mangroves. So when the mangroves are cut down, the crabs move farther, which makes it harder for the person who catch crabs to earn an income. So it would like definitely affect them. If they need the area or the region or the community to develop, they have to allow us freely to cut the mangrove. Because if they don't allow us to cut the mangrove, how we can clear to plant? It can happen. We have to, to clear the woods, the mangrove. My dad always uses to tell us, plant, farm, plant you'll have for yourself, you'll have to give to other people, the animals, the birds will get, so on, things like that. I never give up farming. My father was a big farmer here in the Northwest. His what? name was Frederick Small. Then he took us to Venezuela. We passed something like about 45 to 46 years that way. Then we decided to come back here. When I go to sleep, many nights I keep thinking of it. What am I going to do, my plans and those things, you know understand? Sure. When I look into the, to the woods, I imagine how many acres I can clear to plant something that will put a little change in the pocket. Well, my wife, she always tell me, telling me that um, Raymond, you only wasting money behind the farm throwing away all the little money behind the farm. But I like that. I like what I'm doing, the farming. Yeah. No. <laughs>
<laughs> I don't think you're not focusing on anything else right yeah. now. He wake up at night and he study the next day what he will be doing on the farm. <laughs> yeah. We having a little difficulty here with selling our produce. And I'm glad if we can get assistance from the government so we can sell our produce more easily. I heard that they bring in a, a vessel, a new vessel, to buy more produce from the farmers. And if it's so, well, maybe our produce will sell a bit more, you know. Just recently, um, the government buy a boat for the Northwest Route, Region 1 ferry. And I think it's a much bigger one that, than the present one that runs here, which is Kimbia. Knowing that it will got the capacity to hold more um, farm produce, it means that the door would open more to farming. It really can boost the whole economy of Region 1 and a country as a whole. Guyana recently received a new ferry, the MV Malaysia, from builders in India, and though its primary purpose is to transport people, goods, and vehicles to and from the Northwest District in Region 1, it offers an opportunity to boost the Burima Waini region's agricultural production. President Dr. Irfan Ali said this is possible because a modern vessel can ship products to Trinidad and Tobago, be it crab meat or provisions, in about 15 hours' time. This vessel opens up opportunity for food production, value-added food production, and economic opportunities for the people in Region 1. A lot of ginger is sold this, for this crop, more or less. Yeah, so, and still, we're having some yet in the art, in the mud. Digging gold, let's dig in gold. But we need, we need buyers, people to buy it. More fast, better for us. Maybe if it leaves too long in the land, in the art, it would spoil. Yeah. Well, this is a, a little field that we started here not very long ago. We clean it, burn it, and we already plant plantain, ginger, and coconut here. This land was pure forest, full of big trees, mangrove. And, well, I got people, my neighbor, he first started helping me, cut down the trees. I employ other workers from around here. And the forest cotton was like seven acres. Then we gone to like five more, which was 12 acres. But we had a lot of work um, junking up, cutting up the wood, the mangrove with the chainsaw, then to burn them. We pile them up, heap them up, as we say, and then to light them afire, burn them. After that, we start putting the, the trench. That took us about, about three months trench around that piece of land, that seven acres. Day by day, we making progress so far. If you see here, this is um, a bundiri hole, right? Crab hole, this is. Well, this fella come out at night and eat up all of the, these plants and so on. These crabs, they're pests here. They, as fast as we plant and the crops start coming up, they come and eat in, eating it out. We have to get rid of, try to get rid of them. If we don't, we doesn't get no crops. Yeah. Well, we can't find any crab here now. This now is afternoon. We got to go till crab dark side. That's a good way we got to go. We got to go in the sea. We got to go through the swelling. Go ashore and get the crab. 
that going to take like three hours. Well, it's not safety because we got to go through the swelling. It's really rough. We frighten like bad people. They may thief your motor or they come and then them beat you up and then take with the engine and the boat or, or sometimes then kill you and left you there and you no go reach back home. That third day in we mine and we just go catch crab. No, if the water high, he asks if the water high in the bush. You get the crab? Buck crab. This buck crab. That's for eat. Eat and sell? Yeah. There's the what we, we are living on. Mosquito plenty. Crab important for the water people because that is how them water people live pan. Because them in have no job. Then water people live in pan crab. Saturday you gotta go come to market. So you gotta get the crab like Friday. That's how we just live. But the other day we catch crab for this boat and none of the crab in sell. Because the price that what we call, it too hot for them. The crab too cheap, and they rushing the shop goods dear. Yes. They leave it money, and how much? You, so much time, um, and the way you want to come by. If it's thousand dollar gallon rice, and if you catch one quicker crab, they just for a gallon rice money, you catch. They can't buy like you could buy sugar, you could buy flour. You can't make more money from crab because the crab too cheap. They was building this building to do crab processing. Because as you know, this community here is a Amerindian community, highly dependent on crab. Um, they go out and catch crab and sometimes the market is not available and they have to bring back the crab. And of course, it's really um, worrying, you know. They're always saying, well, um, you know, this, this year the crab wasn't like before. It didn't march as it usual. It used to be and things like that. So then we have to do something because the building, it never materialized, could be used for other purpose that you could benefit of. So they come up with this idea that they will do farming and they choose pepper, which is the weary pepper. It's a pepper that have a nice flavor, especially for cooking. Pepper from region one, especially the weary pepper, is um, even better than the one in Georgetown. And I would think it's because um, this is organic stuff, naturally grown, no fertilizer. So if you pick this pepper today, this pepper can last maybe a whole week. This project being a reality through 
the Guyana Marine Conservation Society with help from donors and um, it's really to help the women of Smith Creek community and these ladies um, at the beginning I can tell you they were struggling but because of good faith they work through many times they read the bed over and over before the ceiling um, was ready for them to plant and now they start harvest and you could see the difference in the women and even the men joining now which is something good the agriculture part i know it's kind of a little tricky knowing that you're trying to explain the importance of the forest but then agriculture you have to clear forest so smith creek is a good example because um the land was already cleared um, for the crop processing project so it never materialized so that's where the weary replanting coming real handy for the for the women for your development of the country there would be a time when you would have some changes changes have to be made when it comes to development Well, my intention is to continue further down in the land to see how much acres we can cultivate as long as I have strength, health and strength. Yeah, but I expect to go on and go on till, till um, I see the last ball bowl, as they say. That's it. For farm, you gotta clear forest. And the only way you can do it if you plant properly. Because the demand is there. Guyana is a growing economy now, and you would have some problem with food supply. So if area can be developed here in region one, and which I think the government is working really hard towards getting the village leaders to understand more about um, the best way of planning for the village development and the country as a whole. So for farming, yes, um, it would cause a threat or impact on the environment in terms of clearing of land. But I think if we do it um, in a responsible way and we plan properly, it could be done. Most of the world people is catch crab and sell. That's the only way to live in a community. Now we get this, this pepper project and now we're doing both sides. If you catch crab and then you pick the pepper, you get your money too. I like to plant this pepper here, this very, very pepper. All the women so glad to see that because we never get that before in the area. Next year from now, we're going to see more pepper we're going to see in the community. More change in the life we could see.